Hey everybody, welcome to a video by 520fishing.net. My name is Moose and uh, I want to share a little bit with you guys today. Um, as some of you guys know, um, I've recently got more into um, tournament fishing for bass. Um, really kind of found a new, um, I guess, appreciation for uh, bass fishing in general. Um, so me and a good friend of mine decided to start 520fishing.net. We uh, we're just kind of starting out, but uh, we appreciate everybody and your support so far. It's been pretty uh, pretty good. But uh, I decided that uh, I wanted to pick up a new rod, um, more of a longer rod than I'm accustomed to. Uh, most of my rods that I use are six and a half foot in some of my spinning, um, six and a half foot in a couple of my bait casters, and then they go up to about seven foot three inches. Um, I decided that I wanted a overall rod. Now that may sound kind of weird to some of you guys, and you're like, what, what the heck is he talking about? Um, Right now I have a whole gambit of rods. I have a frog rod, I have a, um, a worm rod, you know, I have a shaky head rod, I have a, um, a chatterbait rod, I have a spinnerbait rod, I have a, a crankbait rod. And um, one thing that I really wanted to be able to do is, if I just want to go out and kind of enjoy an overall day of fishing, I don't want to have to take five or six or seven or eight rods with me. Um, I'm kind of looking to kind of shorten my list of what I can achieve by maybe buying one rod that is a multi-purpose rod. So I, um, I did some looking around and, and um, I decided to try out one of the Daiwa TDS uh, rods. So it came in the mail today. This is the uh, TDS 7.7, 7. so we have a 7 foot 7 inch medium action uh, casting rod. Um, I actually ordered a reel to go with it. Um, I ordered one of the Daiwa Tatula uh, 100 reels. Um, I, you know, I looked at all the different Tatulas and, and we'll have a whole video on that as well about the Tatula, but um, I figured for just trying it out, um, I would give it a shot. Um, right now I use a lot of uh, Abu Garcia, um, I use some Shimano stuff. Um, all my spinning rods are Shimano reels um, with uh, Okuma rods, but I really, like I said, wanted to find a rod that I felt like I could do multiple things with. Um, I feel like a rod that is seven and a half feet long gives me plenty of um, tip to be able to throw a quarter ounce you know bait and um, this one will actually hold up to three quarters of an ounce so one quarter to three quarters uh, eight to seventeen pound line um, I do plan on running ten pound fluorocarbon on it uh, as a matter of fact uh, I just bought it uh, for the reel it, uh, this will well it's got a sticker on it price tag but vicious fluorocarbon uh, it is the 10-pound, uh, um, you know, by Vicious. So this is what will go on that Tatula reel. And uh, the reason I went with 10-pound, uh, I generally throw an 8-pound with my, like, say, a 2. Or um, if I'm throwing a light Texas rig, you know, quarter ounce, maybe 3 16th of an ounce, um, tube, uh, maybe even an 8-ounce or I'm sorry, worm, Texas rig, uh, maybe even an eighth ounce um, Texas rig worm. Um, but I wanted to be able to get a rod with enough tip and enough length that if I really let this thing go, uh, especially with what I'm hearing about these Tatula reels, um, I should be able to maintain you know, a good amount of casting distance with that on lightweight, as well as if I decide to go to the um, let's say throwing a you know half ounce or a three quarter ounce uh, crankbait deep diver. Um, this will give me plenty of length to get that bait down. Um, it is a little on the light side. 
Um, most of my cranking rods are medium heavy. Um, however, like I said, I'm just kind of trying to experiment a little bit. So once I do get the reel, um, it should be here in a couple of days, then um, you know we'll actually put this thing together and you know we'll we'll go over that and talk about that. Um, I really do like the um, fact that this rod does come with the Fuji guides. Um, it does come with an aluminum um, reel seat, so it's nice and tight. Even though the rest of the reel seat itself is actually not uh, aluminum, um, the actual uh, ring on it is aluminum. So it should give me a fairly nice bite. It is a split handle. Um, I kind of wish it was cork, but you know what? I don't mind foam. I think that foam holds up pretty well, even in wet conditions. Um, the blank itself is, um, this is uh, IM7, and it is an unsanded blank. Now, this is the first rod that I've ever owned that was unsanded. So when you feel this, you can feel all those little ridges along, along the blank. Um, Daiwa says that it adds to um, lightness as well as it adds to strength and recovery for this rod. So that's something that we'll try out once I get a reel on it. Um, I did actually think about throwing one of my Revo reels on it and uh, going out and throwing it, but I'm going to try to hold back. Um, I don't want to gain any um, misconceptions um, about the rod. Um, but actually, in hindsight, thinking about that, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea to throw my Revo on here and, uh, you know, throw it out in the lake down there and uh, see how far I can throw, let's say, a quarter ounce tube. And, um, you know, and really, you know, throw it a bunch of different times, try it out. Uh, the only downfall is, is that, like I said, all my, most of my uh, bait casters are strung with eight pound fluorocarbon. I would actually be throwing 10 pound fluorocarbon um, but, um, and they all are vicious, so I, I guess it's not that huge of a difference, but um, they would almost give it a little unfair review. But uh, all in all, um, the rod I think is, I think it's beautiful. I love the way that it's white in the shank, dark up top. I know a lot of people are probably sitting back going, geez, what difference does it make? Well, I mean, you know, we all want our stuff to look pretty. You know, shoot, I have some Wright and McGill rods sitting there. They're yellow, and uh, that's appealing to me. I kind of dig the yellow blanks. Um, you know, I have some blanks that are white. I just, you know, I happen to like those as well. So, um, for a seven and a half foot rod, it's extremely light. Um, I would say that it is just as light as my um, Shimano Compri rod, um, which is uh, seven foot. And, um, this has got to be real close to that weight. And, I mean, that's a light rod. Um, it doesn't, this thing hardly weighs anything. It seems to be very well balanced. Um, I can only imagine putting the dial on here that, you know, it's, it's going to make a great team. Um, you know, it's got a nice, um, I, I do prefer the, um, the bait holders on these um, where they're actually just bent over. They're not like a circle where you got to actually put a, a hook through. Um, I like this just a little bit easier because generally you can just kind of grab the, the bait, pull it back, and it falls off the bait holder and you can let it go and get to fishing. Um, especially in those high pressure you know, times where you're really trying to get out there and get to fishing. So um, there will be a follow-up video, like I said. Um, once I get the reel, we'll actually take it down to the lake. We'll do some casting and uh, show you guys uh, how well a TDS rod can do. For those of you that uh, are not familiar with the TDS series, um, don't sell yourself short. This is a great rod from everybody that I've talked to. Um, there's a lot of people out there that um, you know think that you know you got to spend $200 to get the same performance as you know what you can get for you know relatively inexpensive. Um, this rod, I believe, retails for about $120. Um, I actually got it on a 4th of July sale online through redsgear.com uh, and um, they also had a deal where it was like, you know, you already got a, a good deal on it 
and then if you spent you know more than X amount of dollars, you got an additional 35 off. So um, I actually bought the rod and the reel. It just it just made sense, and um, I got it for an outstanding deal. So definitely want to give a shout out to uh, RedsGear.com for uh, the great pricing and. Uh, you guys stay tuned. There'll be another video to follow real shortly about the uh, the uh, Tatula reel, and we'll talk about the uh, T-wing system on that and its uh, ability to cast further. From what I understand, um, that's kind of the idea of that T-wing technology um, is to actually open it up so that when you're casting, um, all your line isn't stripping back and forth trying to make it through one little guide. It actually opens up a T-bar where your line basically comes off straight. Um, so, like I said, stay tuned. We'll give it a shot once it gets here. We'll uh, we'll cover a little bit about spooling your reel, things like that, and uh, we'll catch you next time here at 520 Fishing. Y'all have a good day and uh, lots of buckets. <laughs>